I've got this server, and servers nowadays have stupid amounts of RAM. You know, you had these things where a server can have half a terabyte of RAM nowadays, even a terabyte of RAM. The reality is, with the exception of things like data warehouses, a lot of databases simply aren't that big. You know, they're in the hundreds of gigabytes, but you know, the, the days of where a 10 gigabyte database was some scary thing you have to worry about are gone. You know, databases in the hundreds of gigabytes now don't even come close to realizing the power of the servers they're running on. If I've got a box and I can't afford or choose not to spend on an in-memory option, can I get some better benefit from having all this available RAM for my database. If I've got a box with 500 gigs of RAM and my database is only 200 gigabytes, why wouldn't I choose to try exploit that RAM more efficiently? And that's where two options come in, in terms of Oracle. Um, the first one I'll talk about is a thing called automatic large table caching. The way that works is, is let me take a step back. By default, we assume that if you're gonna query huge tables, you probably don't want that stored in memory. That's by default. Because if you go back sort of 10 years, there was this sort of terrible thing where you've got all this precious data in memory. If you've got all this precious data in memory, that's come from all these little reads of, of transactional data. Someone does one big massive table scan and flushes it all out and the table's in memory. That's not what we want. So we introduced a lot of intelligence into the buffer cache algorithms, especially in 8.1, to make sure that the best data, the data that's more, most actively used stays in memory. So out of the box, if you scan a huge table, it's very unlikely we're going to keep it in memory. In fact, it's very unlikely we're even going to touch the buffer cache at all. We'll do a thing called a direct read, which simply takes the data straight off disk to that session that's requesting the data into their PGA. We bypass the buffer cache altogether. But even if we don't, that data that comes into the buffer cache is the first to get ditched. That made a lot of sense when databases were this big and memory was this big. Now that it's flipped over, it, top, you know, it might make more sense to say, when I scan a big table, if I've got huge amounts of RAM, let's keep it in there. Still without interfering with those precious small tables that are in the buffer cache all the time. In, oh, I think it's from 12 on onwards, you can allocate a section of your buffer cache. So if my buffer cache is say 10 gig, I might say, well, I'll make it 60 gigs because I've got all this spare RAM. The 10 gig stays the same and I'll allocate, I can choose a percentage, I can say, well, I can say 80% of my buffer cache is dedicated for what we call large table caching. But what happens now is when I scan large tables, they'll be dragged into that dedicated area. It's a dedicated chunk of the buffer cache for massive objects. I can't remember the, the exact specifics of the terminology, but we recall what's called a temperature on these objects as in how actively they're, they're used. And that's what defines the usage algorithm as of when these things get purged out. But they get dragged in and they stay in there as long as possible until something else pushes them out. So that's the first element of caching a full database, this thing called large table, automatic large table caching, where you dedicate a part of your database to large objects. The next level up is more along the lines of this called full database caching, and it's simply the logical extension of that. It's still the database working in its conventional form. Right? There's no in-memory column store, there's no particular enhancements or risk factors. It's not like the whole database is cached in memory, therefore if you shut it down, you're gonna break things and lose data, etc. All the normal concepts of transactional integrity, persistence, read logs still apply, but you're telling the, the system that the entire database will be housed in memory. It's so, it's so small, or your RAM is so large, that you don't have to worry about purging information out if necessary. So that's full database caching. I haven't seen a lot of people using it. And I think that's perhaps because of a misinterpretation of the facility. People have sort of said, oh, this is like a version of times 10. It's effectively an in-memory database that never writes to disk and therefore it's incredibly fast. It's fast in terms of reads, but we're still using database protections, etc. cetera. It's not, it's not a times 10 replacement. It's just an acknowledgement of the fact that RAM is so big nowadays that a lot of databases can actually just sit inside it and we can adjust our memory management algorithms to take advantage of that.